Today's video is going to be how I maintain my tools now while I'm turning um, as a result of um, seeing a video or one of several videos um, by a guy called James Barry. Now James has been in the sharpening business for about 20 odd years and his product is that good he actually supplies Trend with diamond honing stones. Um, fortunately for me, my birthday is at the same time as James's, so he very kindly sent me a couple of um, the um, honing stones as a birthday present. And um, I assure you, if I had found that there was no use for them in my workshop, I would not have done this review. The, the type of media out there for diamond homes is very varied. There's the bottom end of the market and there's the top end of the market and these definitely are at the top end of the market um, by the mere fact that they are actually uh, endorsed by Trend uh, is testament to that. Basically what it is, it saves you going to the grinder every time you want to maintain an edge on your tools. Which leads me very, very conveniently into a superb video that was uploaded by Robbie the Woodturner last week. And it goes through his methods of sharpening his turning tools. It is a must watch for new turners and experienced turners alike. Because we all are thirsty for different methods of doing things and we learn through others. Everybody has their own way of uh, sharpening their tools, whether it be with a grinder, whether it be with a jig, whether it be freehand or using something like the Sorvi Pro Edge belt system, whatever. We have to have some form of medium to sharpen our tools initially. What these diamond honing stones do is maintain that edge during turning. My advice is to sharpen your tool before you start your project as you would normally um, and then maintain that edge with these diamond honing stones. What Barry sent me was um, a small half round file and a credit card file. Now this is a little bit unique in my opinion because it is very thick substrate. It's two millimeters thick. There's no flex in it at all. I actually purchased one of these about 18 months ago in my quest to get a really good edge and it was like a credit card, as it said. It, it was, as it said on the tin, it was, in my opinion, useless because it flexed too much. This is really rigid. Good bit of kit. It's double-sided, 600 grit on one side, which is ideal for carboy tools, and the 300 grit, which um, James suggests is what you use on your turning tools. And apparently there are a lot of professional turners that use this sort of medium to touch up their tools while they're turning. Um, I found it absolutely brilliant. Now the way I use it is with, as is recommended, uh, the trend lapping fluid, which lubricates the stone. Just a little tap of that and that's all you need. And also when you finish doing your sharpening, a quick rub over with the uh, trend um, cleaning block these two items I purchased to go in conjunction with these files. For a technical explanation of the makeup and everything else, I'll put a link in my uh, in the description of the video uh, to both Robbie's uh, sharpening tools video and also James Barry James Barry's videos, which will give you a complete rundown of how these are made and the wonderful the many different things that they can do. So if we take, for example, the, for, for an example, the first tool, which is the easiest one to maintain because it has a single edge, um, as a, a single bevel, um, take your tool rest out. And this is a tip I got from um, Eddie Castellin and I've used it ever since. Brilliant for me anyway. And you've got a ready-made tool holder, which makes it, brings it, well, not quite to my eye level, but it certainly makes it a lot easier for doing this sort of task. So you take the, um, in this case, the diamond card with the 300 grit, a little bit of um, lapping fluid on the surface, place your tool in the tool holder, ready-made tool holder, and all you need to do is to find the bevel. 
Because with all tools that are sharpened on a, a grinder, whether it be a 6 inch grinder or an 8 inch grinder, you're creating what is called a hollow grind. There's a concave um, area between the edge and the heel of the tool, whether it be a, a skew chisel, a scraper, it doesn't matter what it is, you have a, co a concave ho hollow grind. So all you need to do is to find the uh, heel and the toe, if you like, which is very easy. You rock it until you've actually located the edge and the heel, and with a very light circular motion, go the length of the tool. That's all you need to do. And the same on the other side, maintaining that contact with the heel and the edge. And believe me, that is a razor sharp, razor sharp edge. Another easy tool to do is your spindle roughing gouge. Again, by virtue of the fact that it's a straight over grind, so you have no wings to contend with. Once you've found that bevel, and this is where the tool rest really does come in handy, or the banjo of the tool rest comes in very handy, is you find your bevel, and again, the same motion. Well, as you're doing that, you're turning them, you can turn the tool so that you will completely sharpen the whole bevel. And that's all that needs to be done. With a, uh, a spindle gouge, slightly more practice needed to get it just right because you have the wings to contend with as well as obviously the, the nose. So you're actually the same idea, not so easy for me to show you doing this while I'm on doing it to the camera because I will be facing the wall doing it. And again, you find that bevel or you find the edge, you find the heel and I'm not, no pressure maintain contact with the edge and the heel and you have touched up that tool brilliantly and the micro bevel that is actually created does aid the act of shear scraping uh, and again, in one of the videos that Barry's in, there's a guy called Morris, I think it is, an American guy, while he's doing his uh, demonstrations in, in the US, and he will explain in far more professional terms and uh, his, his method of explanation will be a little clearer than mine, if you like. Basically, what I'm telling you is, in my opinion, this is a great way of maintaining your tools while you're turning. Carbide tools, carbide cutters. I'm not going to do a demonstration on my carbide cutters from Glen Teagle because at the moment they're still perfectly sharp. Um, so there's no need for me to do it. The square, the, the square uh, profile scraper, if you just take that off the tool and you place the top part, not the underneath, the top part, flat on the stone and literally rotate it around the stone like so and that will make that will then restore a perfect edge. With the round cutter and the uh, profile cutter you have a bevel and again the same principle is that but you would use in the 600 grit as you would with any carbide tools you find that um, the edge and the heel and you rotate around the cutting edge. Uh, Glenn actually said to me he made a little jig for this. Uh, I haven't actually done it yet because as I say I've had no need to actually sharpen these carbide tools yet. Uh, if you get a bit of doweling, uh, put a little a hole in it, you can screw the uh, tip to the doweling, place that in a small in your pin jaws and at, at low speed you can rotate that on the lathe and lightly apply the diamond home to the cutter and that will restore its edge. Somebody made a comment that in, in, in the video I did on the review of Glenn Teagle's tools um, that he's still not convinced that you can touch up carbide tools. Um, I don't know Glenn very well. I know he's not, uh, he's not the sort of guy that, uh, that is uh, prone to uh, untruths, let's put it that way. And he assures me that you can, with a, a good quality diamond home, you can touch up the edge on carbide tools.
So as I said before, it's a fallacy that when they go dull, you have to throw them and buy new ones. Okay, so that is basically what this video was about. Um, for an expert and professional demonstration of what to do, please go to the uh, videos that I'll put the link on underneath for James Barry and for a really good guide on how to sharpen and shape your tools, visit Robbie, Robbie the Woodturner's uh, video on sharpening wood turning tools. Well thank you very much for watching, I hope you found it of some use and a bit interesting uh, and don't forget to subscribe. Cheers now.